Hi friends, I'll tell you what, I'm just crazy about rainbows these days. Rainbows, the science of rainbows, the color of rainbows, and the fact that God uses rainbows to remind us how much he cares for us and how he's always with us. And you know I love science, and rainbows and science go together really well. So today I have not one, but two rainbow science experiments for us to do. So everybody stand back because I'm going to use science. Okay friends, these two experiments are really easy and use things that you have around the house. So I'm just going to run through them really quickly and show you how you can make a rainbow bubble snake and a wonderful rainbow bubble picture that you might could do for mom for Mother's Day this Sunday. So first, your rainbow bubble snake. For the rainbow bubble snake, you'll need an empty water bottle, an old sock or washcloth, liquid dish soap, a little water, some food coloring, liquid food coloring works best, and a rubber band. You'll also need a grown-up to help you cut the water bottle. What you're going to need for that is some kind of old washcloth or perhaps um, an old sock. You're going to need a water bottle. You're going to need a little bit of dish soap and some water that you mix together in a container. And you're going to need, it disappeared on me, you're going to need a rubber band. Don't know where it went, but I have one. So here's what you do, friends. You cut the bottle. Now this is important. If you, you're going to need a grown-up to help you cut the bottle. No two ways about it. Get a grown-up to help you cut the bottle and the rest of it you can probably do yourself. You want the bottle cut down here. Friends, if you cut the bottle way over here, it's going to take more air than you have in your lungs in order to make the bubble snake. So cut it short, cut it right here. Or rather, have the grown-up cut it right there. Then, in a container, a shallow container, but a container that's wider than the bottom of your bottle, because your bottle has to fit into it, in that container you're going to put some dish soap and just a little water and mix them up. Easy peasy. Then, your cut bottle gets your washcloth put over the end of it, and that's where the rubber band comes in to hold that washcloth, or you may have chosen to use a sock, hold that on. Some of the newer bottles are really thin plastic, which is good because it uses less plastic and it recycles faster. But if you have one like that, you might need to spread it out a little after you put the washcloth on. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. We keep using food coloring, don't we? We're going to need food coloring. However many colors of food coloring you want. I'll show you how many I used. Here's my rubber band. It was hiding under the plate. And here are my food colors. I mixed a little bit of my paste food color with water. If you have the liquid food colors, you won't need to put them in jars like this. You're just going to put them straight onto the washcloth. You can do them in any design you like, but to get the best rainbow, you use Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Just like we talked about on Circle Time Live today, remember? Red, orange, yellow, Roy. G for green, and B-I-V, Biv, is blue, indigo, remember we said indigo was super dark blue, and violet, which is the same as purple. So for our purposes, I just used the six colors. Red, it's actually, this one's red. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And I brushed them with, you can brush them with a finger, with the end of your um, 
food coloring dropper, or you can use an old paintbrush or Q-tip to put all the colors on there. Then you dip it in your soapy water solution and you get a bubble snake. Blow your bubble snake in the sink or outside. I'll show you why. Your bubble snake comes out full of beautiful colors, but you don't want to get those colors on your clothes or the counter or the floor, any place like that. So use the sink or blow it in the grass outside. Can you find each color of the rainbow in my rainbow bubble snake? Look for Roy G. Biv. Now, why do you suppose your bubble snake comes out so long like that with so many bubbles? If you can think of why it makes so many bubbles, will you send me a note and maybe a picture of what you do? It might have something to do with the washcloth or the sock. Hmm, you might want to examine that sock or washcloth that you use and see if you can think why it makes so many bubbles. Now our next experiment, shh, it's the Mother's Day one. You can make a picture for Mother's Day. I made this picture for my mom using bubble soap and paint. This one is made with paint and bubbles. I'll show you how. You'll need some colors of paint and you mix them with some bubble solution. I used little lollipop sticks to mix mine, but you could use a toothpick or a popsicle stick or even a spoon if you wash the spoon really well when you're done. You have two tablespoons of paint to every three tablespoons of bubble solution. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't have that much paint or don't have that much bubble solution, as long as you use two parts of paint to three parts of bubble solution. So that means if you put in this much paint, you put in half again as much bubble solution. Easy peasy. All right, my friends, then you need something to blow the bubbles. You could use a bubble wand if you have one, but if you don't have one, you can be creative. I used a piece of wire and I made a bubble maker like this. It reminds me of the egg dippers we used on Easter day. I said Easter day because remember, it's still Easter season, isn't it? And we are still celebrating. The other way, is to cut up a straw and use a straw dipped in your paint to blow your bubbles onto the paper. I'll show you how it works. For this experiment, you're going to need a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be printing paper. It could be construction paper, but it needs to be white. And you'll need something down on the surface because you're going to be using paint. So you'll need two or three or four colors of paint, which you're going to mix with some bubble solution. And I put just a little bit of dish soap in mine. You're gonna need a paper towel for cleaning up your mess and something to stir the paint and the bubbles together. And either a bubble wand, or you could make a bubble wand out of wire or a straw in order to create your experiment by blowing paint bubbles on paper. What? Here's what you'll need. Paint, bubble solution, dish soap, white paper, measuring spoons, straws and or a bubble wand. You can have both or either and paper towels. Remember, we always clean up our own mess when we experiment. You're also going to need a tablespoon measuring spoon. You're going to use your tablespoon to measure two tablespoons of your paint, three tablespoons of your bu bubble solution, and then you're just going to put in a little squirt of dish soap if you want to use it. Remember the dish soap is optional. 
you use something to stir your paint and your bubble solution together. I use these lollipop sticks. You can use a spoon or whatever as long as you wash it. And then you're going, once you've got them all mixed together, you'll use your bubble wand or your straw to create your picture. Just a second and I'll show you how that works. Here's how you use the bubble wand. Got a nice film on there. Bend down and blow. Right onto your paper. It makes a light design. Let's see what happens with the straw. I dip it in. Oh, I like that. You have to get close to the paper. Let's see what happens if I do it sideways. Oh, that's fun too. We'll try some different colors. Take a look here where I've made the video go faster and see what you think is working best to make wonderful, interesting bubble paint shapes on the paper. Is it the straw or is it the little bubble wand I made? Does it work better if I blow or if I set the wand down and pop the bubbles after? I wonder what will work best for you. Here's my finished painting. The reason I left all of the bottom empty is because I'm going to, once it's dry, I'm going to use a marker and I'm going to turn it into a bouquet of balloons and make it a Mother's Day card for my mom. What I found is the straws work pretty well, but mostly they blow the paint around and that's kind of fun. Then the bubble maker worked okay when I was blowing it, but the best way was to put it in the paint and then set it down on the paper and pick it up again. If there were still a bubble on the paper, then I would, let's see if I can do it. I just pop the bubble with my finger. That was my favorite way of all. When you try it, send me a picture and tell me your favorite way to do it. This is how mine turned out. I really like how the bunch of balloons looks. And even this splatter right here, I decided it's a balloon that popped. And I wrote, uh-oh, by it. It's easy to draw the long black strings down from your balloons, but you've got to wait till it's completely dry. And then I wrote a note to my mom. I said, dear mom, I love you more than a bunch of beautiful balloons. Make a pretty picture like this for your mom for Mother's Day, or maybe you'll think of something else to do with your bubble picture. I'd love to hear about it. Now, when you make it, think about this. When you pop the bubble on the page, why does the paint land on the paper instead of flowing away? Hmm, do you think you can tell me? I'd love to hear. Bye guys, see you soon.